Right, oh, ladies and gentlemen, it's that time of the week. Well, actually, it's that time of the year. It is about time to kick off season two. We're very excited. I can't believe we made it through, let alone one season. I, but it's time. I love that you call it a season. I didn't know we had a season, yeah, but yeah. it is 2023, and it's going to be a big year. Yes. We're very excited. Josh, it is off-road racing time. It's about to crank up. We're about to make it happen. I tell you what, we have some great guests here on the first episode of 2023. And as Big Kev said, I am excited, Josh. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, we are very excited about this episode. Uh, I guess the best way probably to describe it is that it is a ARB Off-Road Racing Championship 2023 preview. Now, as they alluded to, there's some... Uh, Big announcements coming tonight, which is pretty cool. And we're actually very honoured that they uh, they chose us to be able to uh, bring this announcement to you guys as well. But uh, we had a little sneak peek at what the announcement is, and we are stoked about it, Dan. Pretty darn excited, that's for sure. So without further ado, let's get underway here because we have tons of guests and tons of people to talk to today. And, uh, and Josh, let's crank it up. First off, uh, because we're talking about the ARB series, uh, let's bring in, we've got none other than Dan Brown. We got Jeff Newick, and we also have from Raceline Wheels, uh, Chris Hummer. So it's going to be an exciting time here. Boys, we are very excited to have you guys here, and we're very excited to have some of this uh, information come out right before Rainbow. I mean, Rainbow's upon us. The ARB series is about to kick off uh, fast and loud, and, I mean, it's all happening, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Thanks for having us. Um Obviously, long-time listener, first-time guest. Um, yeah, we're uh, we're super excited, and yeah, thanks for giving us a platform to to get this out. I mean, it's it's great that we can reach the uh, the Australian off road and and international off road communities and and get out and have a chat about about what we've got planned for this year. Yeah, it's awesome to um, <clears throat> kick off another year. We've been involved for a number of years now, and every year it just gets more and more exciting. Yeah, Jeff, I mean, you go to every race and obviously Dan too, you know, heavily involved in the race and the scene and everything else as well as racing. But, you know, also this year coming on board because, you know, Mickey Thompson has been a staple around the ARB series for as long as I can remember the ARB series. And, you know, we're going to crank up, Josh, because uh, next we've got Chris Hummer as well, because, you know, Raceline are coming on this year as well as a major sponsor. And I tell you what, I'm excited to see that. Thanks, guys. Look, it's great for us we're really happy to be on board this year with the arb series um yeah you know, raceline's been around for about 26 years in the racing scene overseas and you know a lot of the guys use the product in australia as well and dynamic wheel co have taken on the raceline brand and you know uh, i guess we're really focused on that off-road area everybody has probably seen the old raceline monster beadlock but you know we've got some new products out as well which is the raceline rhino and that comes in a a fully forged beadlock as well so we're really excited to be part of this series and you know showcase our products to not only your competitors but also you know to the public at large that you know we are a serious brand in the in the aftermarket as well yeah awesome chris now listen i wanted to touch base because i really should have asked you this off camera but apparently i'm gonna do it live on air hey now Chris, are you the old the guy that used to race the range back in the day at Outback Challenge? Because, I mean, we're Winch Challenge boys before we're off-road racing boys. So, I mean, am I on the right track there? You, you've got a very big history in racing, in, well, you know, off-road racing in, in varied forms, haven't you? No, you must have mistaken me with someone oh. else. No, that's true. That's true. No, yeah. Oh, <laughs> that say. was me. Yeah. Well, that's, a, that's amazing because, I mean, that, let's flip it a little bit to then Dan Brown because, I mean, you guys are like Andy Brown is a legend back in the day with the OBC scene and bits and pieces. So it's sort of funny that, you know, that ARB, the race line, the dynamic wheels, all that sort of stuff, you know, you guys and, and Mickey Thompson, who can, you know, forget that, is that, you know, like it's not just off-road racing, is it? It's, it's winch challenging, it, it, it's, it's touring, it's four-wheel driving. It, it's really a, a, like for everyone, isn't it? Yeah, look, um, yeah, been around, I guess, uh, you know, the winch challenge scene for quite a long time. Haven't really done any off-road racing myself, but also, you know, ultra four. I mean, race lines pretty strong in that sport as well overseas. But, uh, you know, in Australia, obviously the premier, I guess, racing is that off-road racing and, you know, ARB do a great job sponsoring this series. And, um, you know, look, hey, I guess... 
Uh, I'd love to do, you know, I'd love to get in one of the buggies at uh, one of these races because they are just, yeah, awesome machines that, uh, yeah, that are just a league ahead of everything else that, that I guess that I've raced in. So, but, you know, um, I guess it didn't end that way for me. So, you know, I still enjoy the, the long course events, but uh, yeah, looking, uh, looking forward to this series and I'm looking forward to coming up to Rainbow and, and watch some of these trucks because, you know, uh, they're just, uh, you know, seeing all the, the drivers that you've followed for all the years out there still going and, you know, really doing a great job. There's, there's well, still Chris, time for you. I was going to say, there's still time for you, Chris. Dad's 87 and he's still getting around all right. So you got a few years left, didn't you? <laughs> well, Chris, I was going to have a joke and say, well, you're in the, you, you dipped your toe in the water the right way because, uh, I mean, uh, both Andy and, and Dan would obviously be a great rider. And listen, you mentioned trucks. Like, if you want to see some fast stuff, mate, you, you're going to go see pro buggies. That's the reality of it, mate. So don't worry about those truck things. They're, they're a little bit slow, eh, Dan? That's exactly right. <laughs> no, listen, it'll fun. be good. Oh, I was going to say, Jamie Knight will be on soon and he'll be throwing hands in a minute. So, but no, absolutely. There's some great comp competition at the top of the uh, the food chain there. And, and Chris, I'm sure that uh, I have no doubt at some point you'll end up going for a ride. And again, it's so fantastic to have Raceline on board as one of the major sponsors here of the ARB series. And it's going to be great. Now, let's. Flip a moment, uh, Jeff. Jeff uh, is heavily involved in the scene, not just as a sponsor, but, you know, you're involved in almost every facet of it, aren't you? So, Jeff, talk a little bit about your background and how you got involved in this off-road racing scene. Well, originally I started in Winch Challenge myself. Um, did that for a little bit and went over to Malaysia with Chris, did the Rainforest Challenge. And then it just seemed a natural progression when we got involved, well, when I got started with um, Mickey Thompson nearly 17 years ago. Um, Off-road racing is really in the DNA of Mickey Thompson. You know, that's where he started. He established a tyre company in 1963, started racing in 1969, established SCORE in 1973, and then, of course, did the stadium racing after that. Um, so for us to get involved, and it was just something that I was passionate about. And, you know, in the beginning, I was paying my own way the company wasn't. I was paying my own way to go to, go to the races, talk to people and uh, see what it was all about and see what we could do. And we started out with uh, one vehicle in our tyres and it's just grown from there. Yeah, that's so awesome. Again, yeah, you mentioned the Rainforest Challenge and some of that stuff and you're right. Like it, it's a, just a progression, isn't it, where, you know, and, and Mickey Thompson, I mean, such a legend in the sport and and taken way too soon, obviously. And, uh, yeah, some of the progression and, and the racing that he did, he really was an innovator and a true game changer. And that's that's so exciting, you know, like, and for that to continue to get that legacy in this sport, it's fantastic. And I suppose talking about legacy, now it's a great opportunity to, and, and a little bit of a game changer. Uh, Dan Brown as well, you know, like, I mean, uh, involved in the sport, got heavily, you know, involved obviously in the off-road racing scene, been doing that for quite a while. For our listeners, I, I'm, most of you will probably know Dan Brown from such videos as Gundy Backflips, but <laughs> let's talk about, you know, give us a bit of history, Dan. When did you start racing? I mean, I remember you in the, in the little yellow shanty, but I'm sure you've probably got history before that, do you? Yeah, so I um, obviously dad dad raced. Um, he dad used to build gearboxes. So dad used to have a little company called Volksbug, um, and used to build Craig Martin's gearboxes. So um, he went to a race with Craig, and they sort of got the he got the whole what's this about? And he uh, he got a car soon after and started racing. And so I got a car. I used to race dirt bikes uh, in go karts. So um, they want to get me off those off the bikes. Uh, there's a few mates having a few injuries. So. I got a car um, off Red Owen. I swapped a go kart, which I gave to Tyler Owen, and Red Owen go gave me uh, Glen Owen's old uh, Trekker, uh, which was just a, just a chassis. So we built that up um, into a class two. And I think I raced that when I was, I think, it was 17 or 18. Oh, 2007 it was. Sea Lake was my first race, um, George and I, and we got third overall and first class two. And uh, yeah, just been sort of going since then. We ran that for a year and then. Bought Shannon Wrench's old uh, Chinooth, the SR20 powered thing, and that was a that was a lesson in engine building and and all that because we um, you know that's sort of the deal um, when when I did this with Dad was he's like you know he's he's happy to foot the bills but I have to do all the work on the car myself um, so and it's still like that we do everything ourselves everything in house um, you know we have we have a lot of great help from people like Dean Williams and 
Uh, we have engine builders because that's just a bit to be honest now. Um, but yeah, no, everything else, um, like a lot of the guys in the sport, everything's done completely in house. So yeah, we've had a good run, um, had a lot of fun, met, met a lot of good people, and you know, it's, it's our outlet. It's what we do for fun. Um, we get away. Um, you know, we if, if it wasn't fun, we wouldn't be going away and doing it. We um, we just we're just there for the weekend away and um, have a few beers with mates. And you know, if, if we have a good weekend, then that's uh, it's even better for us. Yeah, absolutely. But I think what's so good to see is that, you know, all three of you guys are so passionate about the sport from both a competitor and a participant, uh, you know, like as in, a, you know, you're happy to be involved as a sponsor. And I mean, that that's something that's really cool in this sport is I feel like a lot of the guys that are involved in the sport in a sponsorship level are also on the ground level. They're, they're boots on ground racing as well. So they, you know, really know what competitors want. You know, lots of these guys are stepping up through and, and you know, again, with the, the ARB series from its conception, I mean, it's just been going from strength to strength. And talking of strength to strength, uh, like which one of you gentlemen get to give us the exciting news that we are, you know, uh, announcing this uh, on this podcast? Because I tell you what, when you guys told me this, I got very excited because I see this as pretty much the future of all of this desert racing style of stuff. Again, Jeff, are you doing the honours? Oh, I think we'll we'll leave that to Danny. He's the chairman of the ARB. <laughs> so let's let, let him spill the beans. Yeah. Okay. Well. Um. Yeah. So last year, after the after the Pines event, we had just amazing feedback of of the live event of the live live stream for the championship. Um. So this year we've gone ahead. Um. And, and it wouldn't happen without the backing of the clubs. Um. Because you know it is a great expense. You know we we obviously sponsor the series along with uh, Mickey Thompson and Raceline. Um. But that you know that we we can't come up with all the funding. Um. So along with them, we're going to be live streaming every race this year. Um. So it'll be you know, back to home, exactly like we did at, at um, Pines. Great group of people behind the production of that. Um, so, yeah, we're going to be able to get these races um, back into people's homes. You know, everyone, families and friends at home, we'll be able to follow the race completely. We're going to have cameras out on the track, um, you know, places like, you know, like uh, like all the tracks we actually go to, they're going to be, it's going to be awesome to be able to have two or three cameras out on the prologue track, for instance, and, and just continually live stream that with um, Sandy Bowman's going to be doing roving commentary. Um, you've got event commentary um, and, you know, static cameras and everything. So um, with the help of things like Starlink, we can now do it. So we can get the cameras out there. We can get that. We can get the footage back like instantly. So, um, yeah, we're really excited. And um, hopefully, um, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a way of things to go with our sport moving forward in the future. You know, we'll, next thing will be like in the live streaming from the cars when we can, we can manage that. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, we're, we're super excited about it. It's going to be going out on, on lots of platforms too. I mean, it'll be on the Aora Facebook page, live streaming. It'll be the um, ARB Championship page. We'll have it on the Mickey Thompson page as well and plus through a YouTube channel. So people can sit in their lounge room and tune their TV in. Um, there's also updates that goes across the screen with Rally Safe. So it actually shows where all the vehicles are at any particular time. So people can, you know, basically feel like they're going to be there. Yeah, that's, that's something that I think has really changed the game. We talk about it a fair bit in this podcast, honestly, with uh, Starlink and the bits and pieces that are happening now. I mean, you can basically live feed from helicopters, drones. I mean, it's coming. I, I know it's still a bit of an early stage, but as you said, Danny, uh, like cars, you know, we're starting to, you see it from Baja and, you know, King of the Hammers and this sort of stuff. I mean, it really is one of those things that is emerging so quickly because two years ago, this was, you know, very much struggle city people were sort of iphoning it at gundy you know zip tied to pegs and bits and pieces as much as we could possibly do but now we've got crystal clear internet coming from basically anywhere in australia uh, anywhere on the world for that matter and and i think that that's a real game changer because for so long we've really struggled haven't we to get that though you know we've had great people that have done filming and bits and pieces over the years but i mean you know you've got to wait and upload it and edit it and all this sort of stuff we're such a society now that uh it's so fast and you know now we can get that craving instantly whatever's going on it you know any of these rounds of the arb it's happening right there in front of you it's it's simply amazing i love it yeah and um you know i think it's awesome doing you know like when, if you can get tv coverage it's it's so expensive to do and again it's it's months later it's not it's weeks or months later it's it's not on the day so um you know to be able to get the footage out you know my 90 year old uh, mother, uh, grandmother in law she was you know at pine she was sitting at home um had her ipad up and watching it and she watched the whole event and you know she had a great time and it, it's great for the families back home and the relatives that can't make it to the race you know that 
they're sort of sitting around like on tender hooks waiting for a phone call or looking for updates and you know that's what we want to do is support those people back home so that they can feel a part of it and you know they do feel like a part of the race and 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 get the information of you know how the race is unfolding and you know where their loved ones or partners or mums or dads or mates are um yeah i think it's i think it's great it's a great way to move forward and um yeah i'm really excited about it and the good part about it as well if the spectators at the track we've actually got the company you know screenshot big screens and they will have a big screen at the track that people that are spectating can actually see all that information and see those cameras that are out on the track they're not just watching one area yeah, absolutely. That that makes a big difference as well because, yeah, we all have been in spectated races and, you know, you really can only see that little bit. I know that there's, you know, a few events where it's been happening and, you know, that style of big screen thing, I, I again, really do see it as the future of where we're going. Mm -hmm. The other great thing is not just the people at home, and, I mean, that is the primary. I, I, I can tell you for years, you know, trying to get information back to parents and wives and, and you know, family, and that that's a big thing. And, again, that live stream will – really fill a void there but also uh dan you know like you've raced over in america and done a bit in pieces as you guys have all around the place um you know it, it's interesting because we're starting to become one of those things like there is a lot of people talking about racing and talking about cars from over in let's say america or you know any of those sort of places and it'll be cool now because essentially those guys will get to see because i mean mm -hmm. Dan, how crazy is the difference in racing compared australia versus america like it, it's really chalk and cheese isn't it yeah, um, it, when you go over there and race with those guys and talk to them, um, you know, the guys that have been here and even, you know, like Todd and Dunkey who have ridden in cars with guys like Toby Fink, they cannot believe how fast the cars are here. Um, the racing over there, it's, it's more of an endurance racing, so they might back off to 80% sort of pace. Don't get me wrong, they're crazy fast. Um, but, but our racing is very sprint, it's very sprint orientated. You know, it's, it's as fast as you go. If you get a flat tyre, you're not winning a race in Australia. Um, it, it's as simple as that um, a lot of the time anyway, unless you've got, got some huge lead. So, um, yeah, it's, it does allow the, the footage to get out there. And, um, yeah, I sort of lost my train of thought on that. But um, <laughs> yeah, the, with, with America especially, um, you know, when I used to go over there, uh, I still go over there, but the, the information, the race times don't get out anywhere near as fast as like what Murray and Julie get them out. You know, that we come across the finish line. George and I run an iPhone in the car so we can – like actually check times as we come across the finish line so when we're racing we know that you know we're x amount of time behind the next person or we need to pick up the pace we know exactly where we are races in the states they're, they're waiting a week to after the race to get the information so they were amazed at how quick we could get out our race updates and our, our results out so it's you know it's you know it's come full circle again and you know now we'll have the the, the footage to go with it yeah, that's so good, isn't it? Like, and yes, I do think those times that have been instantaneously done for a long time, they've been very ahead of the game there. And yeah, now we can bring that feed to, as have you know, live feeding in Baja and and in California and those bits and pieces. And again, listen, that's all brought to us by the ARB series. So, so Dan. Jeff and also Chris, big shout out to you guys. Like as the major series sponsor, I know that you've got a band of sponsors as well, which I'm sure we'll thank towards the end. But um, yeah, big shout out to you guys. That's some very exciting news. Yeah, um, so yeah, we really want to thank Chris um, and Raceline for coming on board as well. Um, you know, they already through their parent company sponsor through Mickey Thompson, so it was very generous of them to to jump on again. And um, hopefully, we can repay them. Like uh, like Jeff said. When he first started coming to races, there was only probably one car on Mickey Thompson's and you come to an ARB championship event or any other race for that matter and you walk through the car park now and it's not only the race cars got the, the wheels and tires the tires on, but you go through the pits and the trailers, the, the tow cars, they've got them on too. Mm -hmm. So hopefully we can repay um, Raceline sponsorship with, you know, some, some cars getting their, their wheels on and I know that um, they're going to have some kind of racing discount and, and help out as well. So you know, it's, it's going to be good for the for the customer at the end of the day as well. So, yeah, massive thanks to Chris and, and the team at Raceline for jumping on. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, Chris, thank you so much, mate. We appreciate uh, everything you're doing. Now, I know you've got some other commitments, but, again, we want to thank you very much for being part of the, the pod at this point. And uh, a big shout-out to Raceline. Again, they've come on as one of the series sponsors. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, guys, and really appreciate you supporting the series as well. No worries at all. Yeah, again, great. And again, they've been around a long time. I do remember when they first come out, those monsters on uh, some ultra full cars and, and, you know, race cars around the place. They were on some winch challenge trucks and very cool wheels. Something definitely to check out. Hey, now, guys, I think... 
because we've got such an awesome guest lineup, we might keep pushing along here. Uh, we've got none other than Darren Wells, and he's going to be uh, talking about our round one. So, uh, Darren, big shout out to you, mate. How's everything going there? Uh, very good, thanks. Uh, Danny, yeah, thanks for having me on. Um, I suppose I'm on here to talk about our uh, the first round of the Australian um, ARB, Australian Off-Road Championship. And uh, we've got four four great rounds this year. And, of course, the uh, the big desert 480, which is down at Rainbow, which has been on for the last few years. And it's a, uh, well, it, it will be the, uh, the longest off-road uh, race that we have throughout the series. It's 480 Ks. And it's a tough day at the office down there, I can tell you. She's uh, got sand, big whoops, tree sections, dusty areas, and uh, you've got to drive with your head and not your foot down there. Oh, I like the sound of that. Again, lots of range of uh, terrain, and that's one thing that uh, a lot of these races have been really well known for. I mean, it's been handpicked the the four rounds that we have here. It's you know, it's very exciting in the ARB series. And uh, Darren, tell us a little bit about the competitor lineup because you know it's upon us now. How's it looking? Is it very? It's stacked, obviously. Oh, I mean, uh, it's great, mate. We've got sixty of the best uh, drivers in Australia already entered. Um, over the years that we've had this race, um, Greggy Gartner always comes to the top and he's he's entered. So as, as what I heard what you said before about the trucks, but this track suits trucks. I don't know what it is. It gets really tough and gnarly at the end of the day out the back. Big holes, those trucks, plenty of wheel travel. And Greg, um, Greg I think Greg's won this event a couple of times. Mark Burrows won it last year, I believe. Uh, Mark Burrows, of course, uh, this year, brand new car. Uh, he's, he's running two cars this year. Matthew's running the old Jimco. Mark's got a brand new um, monk built car. So, um, and we've got, I was looking at the lineup there before. We've got uh, 17 big boys, which I call them, in the ultimate class this year. And um, I was just looking, we've got Dale Martin and Matt, Matt Hansen's going to do the whole series in the ARB Championship this year. Clayton Chapman, Stuart Chapman. Um, who else have we got? Um, uh, Michael Marsons coming down. Danny Brown, Andy Brown. I tell you, it is going to be a fantastic race. Who's going to win? Don't know. I love it. That is a stacked field. There is no question about that. And with some really amazing cars in that lineup too. Yeah, I think it's going to be interesting because, you know, like it's it's always such a great one. A lot of people are dipping their toes in the water to see how their series goes. And, you know, it's a great opportunity. I mean, we're talking to a lot of people that, are, you know, they're talking about getting out and, and you know, attending at least a couple of the series uh, races. You know what I mean? It, it's good. And it's an interesting um, lineup these days. Like, you know, like you've got Gundy on board and you've got Hilston on board. Like it's all challenging tracks that are, are, are quite varied, isn't it? Is that, you know, I'm trying to get at the fact that, um, um, you know, no, no, none of the race tracks are the same, and that, that's something that really interests me. Well, it's a four-round series. ARB over the last few years have put on a four four-round Australian Championship series, and you've got to finish all four races to get points. At the end of the year, we have an Australian champion in in the ARB series. Beautiful big trophy. The trophies that are handed out at the end of the year down at uh, at the Pines are amazing. I've never seen trophies at any event like this, at, at a series event like this. They hand out um, heaps of vouchers at the end of the year, cup two or three thousand dollars worth of vouchers, and then a lot of ARB gifts and goods. And of course, Jeff Newick has put out Mickey Thompson tyres, and I'm sure Raceline Wheels, what a fantastic sponsor to come on board. They'll probably be handing out uh, full sets of wheels at the end of the year. So I think anybody that races an off-road car, it's only four rounds and they should all get on board and, 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 and have a crack at it. Yeah, I love it. And because the other thing, you were talking about the big boys there and you had mentioned a few of the cars. The other thing that I'm interested in, like there's a couple of like class eight cars that I see coming out of woodworks, new and old cars coming out of sheds. And then the other class that I really love, uh, Darren, is the class 10 cars. I think that's something that's just so exciting at the moment. And running a series in class 10, you know, it's not only competitive, but it's affordable. It's the cars are stinking fast. I mean, they're, they're well and truly capable of being in the top 10. I mean, 
I, I think that some of these classes, like obviously everyone loves the big boys. There's no question about that. We're involved in that too. Love it. But man, some of these classes, you know, it's just so good to see these racing and running for a full series too. You know, the guys backing it up for four rounds. It's going to be quite well, interesting, I think. Well, we've got, um, I've noticed on the entry sheet, we've got nine class 10 cars. We've got 17 um, ultimate class cars. We've got 16 class, uh, six class one cars. It's a great field. When you look through the entry list, it's quite amazing the amount of people that have entered this event. So it's it's like back in the old days where, you know, it's going to be a, um, a certainly no one will pick who will win this event. You know, when you look at the names, there's a like a sort of Brent Martin, who's our current um, current Australian champion. He'll be out there with his um, brand new uh, Mickey Thompson wrapped car. He's sponsored by Mickey Thompson this year. Uh, Dale Martin, he's gone to the ultimate class. He's got a twin turbo Jimco that he bought in from New Zealand. So, you know, and all these other guys, they've all got big horsepower cars, but, gee, I can't but say that, geez, Greg Gartner is going to be hard to toss. Jamie Knight's coming down from up at Gundawindi. Now, he's another hard charger as well. Well, and he's got the new truck too, which is the old Hall truck. And I tell you what, it is a beautiful bit of gear. I got to see it run at Warrialda and um, they had a few little teething issues, but overall that truck stonk. So it's going to be one to watch out for because, I mean, we all remember when it was black and it used to run with the Hall boys. And, uh, yeah, I think it's going to be a very interesting race. Yeah, 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 Jamie's definitely one to look out for on a number of those tracks. Again, no buggies, boys. That's I'm just saying it, you know. Like, I think that uh, you'd be silly to bet your money anywhere else because I'm so one-eyed. But, uh, yeah, yeah, I do see it that, as a yeah. great risk. <laughs> yeah, well, see, I, no one will I, back I, with me. I, I'd like to say that the Rainbow Rises, the event um, organisers up there, I was on a uh, Zoom meeting last night. They showed, showed a lot of pictures of the circuit, and they've done so many changes this year. They've made a, a complete new pit area. There's about five acres of a new pit area there. They've built another spectator um, area in front of the pit area, which is uh, raised up about five metres high. And the track looks a treat. So all new fencing. The people of Rainbow just absolutely adore off-road racing coming to the town. And, of course, up there, it's a, it's a three-day event. We have scrutineering on Friday, sausage sizzle Friday night, then Saturday, of course, we have prologue in the morning and then in the afternoon we do two laps, 80, two laps of 80. And then Sunday we have two laps, then a 45-minute break and another two laps. So she's a tough day at the office up there at Rainbow. Yeah, yeah that's and a lot of people, I mean, you're talking about some of the buggies and that sort of thing, and I, I think there's a guy in there that's a bit of a, a, a dark horse that, one at the Don River last year and that's Aaron Havey. Yeah, well, I didn't mention Aaron Havey either. Yeah, I thought yeah. So there's another one, Jeff. Aaron yeah, Havey. Aaron James. And the other, the other Aaron, Aaron James too. Like, um, yep. Yeah, there's, I, was just, I was going through the field too. It's when you, when you were talking about the, um, yeah, the big boys, you know, the, the bigger, faster cars, um, that's not what wins the championship these days, unfortunately. <laughs> it's all about consistency. So, you know, you had Brent Martin win last year at Rainbow. He also won Gunda Windy. Um, everywhere he went, he was in the top three. And, and the, at the end of the year, the championship, it was Brent Martin in the, you know, in a, a 3.5 litre naturally aspirated. Um, who was second? Was it Bowie or Glenn Pike in a class six? I think it was second. Yeah, and then yeah, Bowie right. third in a class yeah. 10. So, you know, at the end of the day, if you, if you are chasing a championship, it's all about reliability, not horsepower. And, I was joking with, I've grown up with Brent and Dale uh, Martin. No, I was joking with Brent last year. I used more fuel in the first lap of Rainbow than he did for the whole race, and he still beat me. <laughs> and I would be confused by that because isn't uh, Brenny Martin, he's got a V12 in that, doesn't he? Is it is it very fuel efficient? Is that how that works? Or? Yeah, that's 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 it, yeah. No, it just, does love yeah, the pop, though, that thing, I tell you. Yeah, and he's uh, he's he was like that on a bike too. He's just got he's got a crazy amount of natural talent, and he doesn't button off, and it's really annoying. That that whole family <laughs> is built for it, aren't they? Like they're so fast, and yeah, it, it always blows me away just how fast they are in a three point five natural aspirated car. But it, it's simply brilliant to watch. And again, it seems like he has a switch on that throttle, just holds it on and shifts gears. Yeah, and he's he's sensible too, you know. He um. He's just off, like he's just off it on speed. Like it's it's obviously he's fast everywhere else, but he has to rag on the thing to make it do the lap times it does. So, 
you know, in I was talking to Craig and, and the boys in the off season and they're like, oh, what are we going to do? We're going to put, you know, a big V8 in it. We're going to turbo it. And Brent just said, no, just give me another half litre, make me a four litre. Um, so he was going to come up to the up to the pro class just with a four litre engine, but um, haven't got it finished in time. So it would be interesting if they do it this year or not. But, you know, that's that's Brent's mentality. He's like, just give me a little bit more and I'll rag on it harder. And uh, that's all I need. He does need to go and get seven, 800 horsepower. If we can get another, you know, 15%, he thinks he'll be right. And it's hard, Dan. Like, why would you muck with what's working? I mean, it's 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 doing pretty well for him. Yeah, and you're talking gearboxes, axles, CVs, um, suspension. You know, you you put a big V8 in it. You you change the, the dynamic of the car. It works well now. It does all the right things. So you know, why stuff with it? Yeah, absolutely. Hey, now let, talking about Rainbow, I suppose the other thing I want to know, like you've talked about these spectator things, Dan. Uh, Darren, sorry, I apologise. Um, yep. Like, talk to me a little bit, like. What can other what other things like you know you can get to Rainbow you get there on Friday you know you're doing scrutiny on Friday night now I know that obviously you'll be very but you know accommodation this are bits and pieces like showgrounds what are, what are we doing there at Rainbow big big showgrounds there take um you can camp out at the showgrounds so there's unlimited amount of camping out there at the showgrounds that's for sure there's two pubs in town both of them are fully booked out naturally because um. We have at, at Rainbow, we have all the scrutineering, the whole main street's blocked off and all the vendors have all like sausage chisels and um, steaks and all that down each side of the road. And then they have the scrutineering in front of you. And when the cars get scrutinized, they all park in the main street, which is great. And then, of course, we walk around with a microphone and we have a bit of a talk to a few of the competitors. So... Um, uh, and I think we might be uh, going live on Friday night. I'm not quite sure, but yes. um, someone was talking about that last night. So Friday night's a big deal in town for, for everybody in, at Rainbow. And then, of course, um, if you want to just go up with your camper trailer and camp, just go down to the showgrounds. Now, also, I might say that the uh, football club at the showgrounds put on a great meal on Saturday night. So you've got to book for it. But I think they they dish out about 150 meals every Saturday, on, like on the Saturday night. So, no, it's it's really very, very well organised and a very well-oiled uh, crew put it all together, which is all put together from um, Vora, Victorian Off-Road Racing Association. And it's gone really well for the last, you know, Four, or five, or six years that I've been going up there, and I've been fortunate enough to do the commentary there for that long. And it's um, they've certainly looked after me, built a beautiful commentary box, and um, put an air conditioner in for me. So it's been it's been whatever. Oh, I've life is spot. good. Yeah, I like yeah, it. Yeah, the top spot. No, I won't. I won't uh, yell out too loud about it. Otherwise, I'll have the current boys in with me. Uh, oh, uh, hey, yeah. let's go. Let's go. <laughs> No, I hear there's you. Mate. A, there's that a there's a there's a couple of good pubs there too, Darren, that we steer away from as well, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> Are you having your brother in commentating with you again this year, Darren? Yep, yeah, yeah, we're going to get Glenn in for. Um, he's going to give me a hand in the commentary box, and um, and unfortunately, Lee Wells is going to come in for a couple of special comments. <laughs> um, he's the oracle of off road racing. Specials, so right? He everything mm. he tries to tell Glenn and I what's happening, but. Um, yeah, he'll pop in and out. But, uh, no, it's normally three days there. It's a really fun weekend, and that's what off-road racing is all about, really. It is. Yeah, absolutely, mate. That is absolutely the key, is that uh, anyone listening along, if you haven't had the opportunity to go to an off-road race, I'm telling you now, you've got to go. I, I mean – this will, Gundy 09 was actually Josh and I's first off-road race, and uh, – Change it life changing. I mean, it, it was pretty full on at the time, and uh, yeah, I mean, the spectator area and all the other things that are going on. I mean, it was just so good, and uh, I think it's just something that when you first experience it, it uh, yeah, yeah, it definitely changes the game for most people. I mean, it, so if it, you it, it, this is only a small thing, but we even have flush toilets there at the circuit. Whoa, uh, that is <laughs> not. <nice. laughs> hey, listen, no one likes a bragger, mate. You can actually throw a. I could if I stepped out the back of the commentary box. I'd go close to throwing a rock at the pub that I'm staying at. So the track, you would not believe, wouldn't even be a kilometre from town. Mm. So it's just um, a really interesting um, setup where, you know, the track, the scrutineering and, and uh, the sausage chisel and all that's in town on the Friday night, you drive one kilometre and you're in the pit area. 
So, and a fantastic, and the viewing is amazing. It's a little bit like the Pines, where we've got an eight, eight kilometer prologue track, and 90% of it is in front of you. So, all the punters standing on the hill can see the prologue, which is really good. There's, a, there's action happening in front of you all the time. Mm. Yeah, I think that's one of the things that the AIB series has really nailed it. They've done a really great job on making sure that all the events, the spectators are well uh, catered to, and also that prologue, you really can see at all of your events, like how good the prologue is. And that's a key because, you know, uh, I mean, it is desert racing uh, every now and then it's got to be out into the bush and then back at the end. But, you know, every track so far that we've ever been to, you know, again, you talk about the pines, absolutely brilliant rainbow brilliant and again now that you've got the live feed and the uh you know the big screen it's going to be a real game changer there's no question about that for the whole series it's going to be exciting well that that big screen is just going to be really good because it's bringing the racing into people's lounge rooms and that's what we want you know what's happened over the year with off over the years with off-road racing some a lot of people would go they'd see a car go past every five minutes but now with the big screen and with cameras out in the circuit Everybody sitting at home will be able to see what's going on. So it's you know it's certainly going to be great to have that big screen at every every uh, event this year, at least the, the four Australian Championship rounds. Anyway. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, Jeff. Now, listen. Can you bring up a little bit of information? Can you tell us? So the live stream it's being done. I'm, I'm throwing. It, sorry if I'm throwing you under the bus here, but being right. done by a production company. It's going to be. Uh, are we talking drones, helicopters? Multiple cameras. No, no. <laughs> we haven't got Can the you release? helicopters as yet. Um, I think Danny spent all that money on his car. Um, oh. You're looking at uh, screenshot big screens, uh, partnering with another company called Multimedia. Um, they did the Pines event, and that was a great success. So they're coming along to do, you know, Rainbow for starters as the first one. And uh, I'm sure they'll, I think there's about another four cameras out on the track in different areas. And they put it all together and we'll have it running live stream, as I said, on a lot of social media pages, um, their own pages plus YouTube. Yeah, simply brilliant. I mean, yeah. uh, there's a lot of work. I don't know if everyone really understands, but, you know, behind the scenes, it is a flurry of activity, even with, you know, four cameras and a production crew and everything else going on. You know, there's a lot happening. So it's pretty amazing that this, uh, again, has come along at this time because, you know, it wasn't so long ago. Well, here you go. We'll, we'll talk. It wasn't so long ago that you used to race by sending in an envelope. I mean, that was only 10 or 11 years ago, wasn't it, really? Yeah. So, you know, you used to send your money, a little bit of cash in the uh, Australia Post. Might make it, might not. Who knows? And uh, Australia Post isn't sponsoring us anytime soon with our slagging. But anyway, uh, listen, you know, you guys remember how it used to be racing and, and everything like that. So to think now that we can live stream races all across Australia, pretty amazing, isn't it? It is very amazing. I did make a bit of a, a boo-boo then. It's Dream Multimedia, sorry, not just multimedia. Uh, Dream Multimedia. Um, and also Friday night, they will be we will be broadcasting Friday night from scrutineering as well. Mm. And just, just to yeah, touch brilliant. on that as well, like with the with the production, it's, you know, you, you, off-road is a really unique sport. It's You, you need to know the, the, the layout of the race, how it unfolds, where the people are. So, you know, you've got to have a director in the studio that's switching the channels that knows, hey, switch to that camera now. That's, you know, they're coming through, that person's chasing that person. And because of, you know, the overlap of the, the overtaking to such big tracks, so there's, there's things happening all the time. And to be able to switch back to the to the rally safe and have someone that knows what they're doing there to be able to control that and um, and speak to what's actually happening and how the event's unfolding. So, you know, those that sort of saw the, um, the Pines live stream, it's going to be, you know, very similar to that. We're going to, you know, we're not... We're not going to nail it first go, but, you know, we're, we're really going to learn and try and, um, you know, down the track, you know, drones and helicopters. And it's it's all limited by, you know, how, to, how we get the signal out. You know, um, obviously, uh, Starlink makes that easier, but, you know, we're just going to we want to get the, the, the product out to the people back home so they can so they can see what's going on without too many technical uh, glitches, which is uh, what we, uh, you know, the bane of every tech person's existence. Mm. Yeah, absolutely, mate. And I think that's something that most off-roaders are going to be very comfortable with is the fact that not so long ago we had nothing. So, you know, like now to have this technology and have it going, you know, if there is a few little issues or anything like that, I don't think it's going to be the end of the world. Most of us just love being able to see, you know, trucks, buggies, four-wheel drives and all that sort of stuff. And talking about that, like how on earth did you get Sandy the Showman Bowman 
as your roving commentator. Are we talking roving commentator in his class eight, or he's just going to be floating around on track? No, he's, he's given up the class eight to one of uh, one of his guys, Benny. So Benny's running that, and um, Sandy's Sandy's just had, happy to be involved. And you know, you need someone that's a bit of a character that sort of can get out there and, and jump in people's faces. Um, you know, they need to have a bit of mechanical knowledge so they can understand what's going on. They need to know the sport. So not just anyone can do it. And the um, you know, the barrel's pretty thin, so we scraped right at the bottom, and Sandy was there. Well, I like how you said mechanical knowledge. Mechanical <laughs> knowledge, yes. Mechanical sympathy, no. No, None, never. Yeah. Sandy, oh. Sandy never had that. Well, that no, could actually be pretty, pretty our, clear that, on my words. Yeah, that yes, could, very. That could actually be our uh, camera in the sky. We could uh, tow, tow a parachute behind a car, and Sandy oh. could go up with a camera. Don't, don't <laughs> <be> too soon. <laughs> my goodness, with an iPhone, I like yeah, it. Well, Listen, he is. Sure, uh, if anyone sure knows who we're talking about. I was going to say, anyone that knows that we're talking about, Sandy is a is an absolute character and has been around the sport for a while in many different facets. And I tell you what, exciting that is. Uh, I'm actually excited to see him roving. That's what I'm excited about. Yeah, and we, and we need to have a constant. You know, there has to be someone that goes to all the events because you know, like Darren and that are, are, are commentating at at, um, at Rainbow, and you know, we're going to have some other people at. at uh, Hillston, and when we go to Gundawindi, there's there's another group. So you know we, you got to have that sort of constant. So it's a familiar face, um, has a good uh, understanding of what's going on. Yeah, perfect. That sounds very good. Hey, now listen, Darren. Thank you very much for that information. I appreciate it immensely. Uh, we might uh, say goodbye to you. So again, Darren, would there anything else you'd like to wrap up with? No, but thanks very much for having me on, and I just hope that all the off riders out there. Get down to Rainbow for the Big Desert 480. It's going to be a great weekend. Three days of fun. So be there. Yeah, absolutely, mate. It is going to be perfection. And I tell you what, we will be watching uh, from Queensland and we'll be enjoying the race and the live coverage and we'll be enjoying your supple voice because I know that you've been around uh, talking off-road racing for a long time. Yeah, I've been, I feel like I've been around forever. I think uh, 1978 was my first off-road race with, um, well, back in the day with um, Andy Brown and Craig Martin. So I've been around a while, but um, I do. I'm very passionate for the sport. So um, I love, I love going to all the races and meeting um, all my friends from all over Australia. And uh, and that's what off-road racing is all about. We've made a big, uh, we've made a, a lot of friends over the years. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, your family has been well known and well respected in the off-road racing community. So thanks very much for that. And we appreciate it immensely. And as uh, Darren leaves the studio, Josh, we might actually pull in uh, uh, Dean from Hilston. So Dean's going to have a bit of a chat to us about the uh, the Hilston race, which is round two. How are we all going? Very hey, well, good, mate. Dean. How are you, mate? Yeah, yeah good, yeah. good. Excellent, all systems mate. go down here. Brilliant. We were just talking about some of the amazing things that are happening in the off-road racing scene with the ARB series. I mean, it is one of those things when they start talking about live feed and the racing and the event, I mean, Hilson has just gone from strength to strength and it's exciting, you know, to be round two, you've got a lot of cars coming, a lot of uh, big names coming, and a lot of guys looking for a championship. Talk to us about some of the processes and, you know, where's that going for you guys? Um, well, yeah, we just sort of you know, had to change a venue last year. So their first run at Hilston um, after leaving Stackpool, which was sort of, you know, we weren't sure how that was going to go. But um, from all reports, it's come back that the, you know, the track was good. It was a driver's track. There was a lot of, you know, carnage basically. Like it was, you know, you had to really drive the track. So um, we were all good there. The big screen thing is going to be a brilliant thing for us because we definitely don't have what you were talking about before with the, you uh, the viewing, you definitely only get to see our track at sort of when they're leaving and when they're coming back. But, um, yeah, the big screen is going to make a huge difference for that. And, um, yeah, we're working on, you know, the, the town of Hilson's really come beho got behind us. And, yeah, we just sort of business as usual, get things cracking. Yeah, brilliant. I mean, that's one of those things. Listen, off-road racing is a bit of a challenge to uh, to view, to spectate, and I'm sure that most people understand that, and they enjoy seeing the the high horsepower cars and the and you know the vehicles and that sort of thing. So it's one of those things, isn't it? But yeah, like you said, the big screen is going to be a big change. Um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how that all plays out. I mean, obviously, it's a huge positive for the sport as a whole. Yeah, definitely. Definitely, it's got. It's, it can only be up from there. Like, yeah, 
to have that the live stream just you know for gathering sponsors for doing everything else to have you know that character dangled in front of a sponsor like instead of just saying oh yeah we might get a couple hundred people to a paddock on a sad day to watch it you can actually say like this is going out to you know a you know a um, you know a wider audience you know nationwide really so you know it's it's easier to get bigger sponsors on board it's you know yeah it's it's going to be a game changer for us definitely yeah absolutely and listen i think that's one of the things that you know the championship really brings to the table is uniting us too as well isn't it like you know we've got those four rounds you've got guys that are coming to win a championship and i mean you know to have that one on your roof we keep talking about like you know those numbers are so important to some of these races it really uh solidifies what's going on and it's interesting because we were talking about before like you know brett martin our uh, brent martin and how that you know it's kind of cool that at the moment it's not necessarily Dan was saying before Dan Brown was saying about how it's not necessarily just big horsepower that wins these races. You know, it's going to be one of those things that it's a driver's track, you know, you're working through and it's going to be these guys that, you know, they get the points on the board. It's going to be so key, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. And I think there's been a class 10 car that's been what number three in the championship for the last four years, I think. So, like, that's a testament to the championship that, you know, we are rewarding endurance. You know, you've got to finish. Um, yeah, like, it's the whole the whole setup. It's just, you know, it's been a work in progress. Um, you know, me and my wife have come in halfway through, sort of, you know, Andy and Bobby have sort of got, and Matt have got the wheel rolling with the, you know, in the early stages of, you know, joining the series. And then now it's, you know, now we've sort of taken the baton and different committee and, it's become the championship now and it's sort of becoming a really big thing and it's it's brilliant yeah absolutely i love it and what's so cool is like listening to you talk there is that you know you said yeah about you and your wife coming in and and those sort of things like it's such a family thing isn't it that you're either racing as a family or involved in the sport as a you know event promoter you know it takes all people to make these pro like events go off without a hitch you know it, it's so amazing to see that groups come together mates family you know kids everything going on you know Tell us quickly about how many people and how it's, you know, a group effort to get Helston going. Yeah, it's a huge effort. Like, as anyone, like everyone will know that's ever run an event, like, it is a massive amount of work to, you know, behind the scenes, like, Ash is the race secretary and she just, like, she doesn't stop. Like, it's just you know, a constant thing, just keeping things ticking over. Um, and then, yeah, the family side of it is, yeah, it's, you know, we've got lots of families running it. Um, all our, you know, all our farmers in the area, they're all racers as well. But, you know, we've all sort of gotten into it because of the family atmosphere, you know, to, to go to an event that like, you know, everyone's sort of, you know, we all travel together. We all sort of stay in the same spot. We've all got kids the same age and, you know, it's just one big group that we go to every other race. And then, you know, then for half the year, we all get together and, organize a race so it all sort of yeah it's all good great bunch, bunch of guys and yeah everything sort of ticks over and all the wives do all the work and we drink all the beer <laughs> that that does seem to happen at a few races doesn't it it's so funny yeah it's, it's part of the fun it's got to be done barbecues and beers otherwise their working bees wouldn't happen absolutely another thing, yeah. another thing the, sorry i was jumping there the, the griffith off road club you know, not a lot of people don't know, but Hilston's what 120k from from Griffith. So you know, it's not close. And um, you know, Janie's family gave up their property for that for that race to go on. So it's a it's a huge effort and commitment for these the teams. And you know, I mean, just the the teams. In, in, when I'm talking about teams, I mean the the club um, team of people to get out there and mark tracks and go you know put the pits up, be in the town and get everything going and make sure everything's right. So you know, they're giving up weekends and you know it costs a lot costs a lot of money and fuel to get out there so no it's, a, it's a greatly appreciated by all yeah absolutely as competitors we sort of get the easy bit don't we dan like as as in uh you know you turn up and these guys have almost had a month off from the last race and 11 months of prep to get to the next race it, it's pretty crazy the commitment from these volunteers from these clubs from these teams to to get these races going isn't it yeah it's actually commitment absolutely massive and i mean another <clears throat> forgotten hero of a lot of these things are the landholders you know they're giving up their land for us to go around and and tear it to pieces so we've, we've always got to make sure we thank them and and look after their their land and make sure we get invited back 
Yeah, absolutely. That is definitely a key because it, mm. it gets harder and harder, doesn't it, to get land. But, um, mm. Dean, the other thing I wanted to talk about quickly is what are some of the uh, improvements, like, or not necessarily improvements, just changes, let's say changes, that you guys have done out at that track? Like, what are you looking forward to most seeing the people? Like, you know, when the spectators roll in, what's going to be a little bit different for Hilson 2023? Uh, mainly the big screen. Um, we're trying to get a bit more track closer to the to the pits and to spectator areas, and we're going to try and do designated spectator spectator areas that people can travel to. Um, that's our biggest thing. Is like you know, for us in the car, it's fun. We're like we're, we're racing around having the time of our lives. But for the spectators to come there and you know want to spend their dollars at the canteen or you know want to take a helicopter ride or whatever they want to do, like you've got to have something for them to look at. So. Um, yeah, we're working really hard to try and, you know, find better ways that we can do that. I, you know, the big screen's one of those. Um, and then, you know, if we can do changes to the track, that's sort of up to, you know, it's a working farm. So we can't just sort of, you know, pick a paddock and say we want to ride, you know, drive through there and, you know, build some big jumps. It's just, you know, it's, it's not viable. So, you know, we're going to try and do a lot more on the Friday night in Hilston um we sort of got caught behind the eight ball last year we didn't really know how well it was going to be um supported um so this year hopefully the friday night in town will be you know a bit more of a you know we'll have the, the big screen there as well and you know streaming from there and then um you know there's some other other things in the works that hopefully we can get over the line and um yeah it'll make it a bit of a you know a bit of a show on the friday night so then we can get people to come out you know the track is 20 k's out of Hilson, so you know it is a, a hike for the locals to come out there to um, you know to watch. So we want to you know, we want to give them something to drive out there for, basically. Yeah, absolutely, Dina. I think that's one of those things. Like you know, as a new track is growing and it's getting bigger and it becomes part of a championship and all those things that keep moving forward. I mean, like that's one of those things that we keep stepping up and changing and and modifying. And yep, yeah, you know, again, that Friday night thing. I think that's one of the things that a lot of these uh, championship rounds are really focusing on is understanding that you know Friday in town. You know, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of opportunity, and and it's great to get. You know, how good is it to see? young, you know, boys and girls, kids, you know, checking out these off-road race cars. It's one of the things that definitely make me excited is, you know, when they see these these V8 cars and they hear them and it's race fuel and it smells good. And, yeah, there's a lot going on there and it, and it's exciting to be able to bring off-road racing to a town that wouldn't normally see that, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Like it was, as I said, it was the first year that we were there. So the town really didn't know what to expect. We didn't sort of, couldn't really tell them, you know, we didn't know numbers. You know, we knew what we could get at Stackpool, but we couldn't sort of, you know, you know, didn't know what was going to happen out there. And then, yeah, like the bakery was packed every morning from, you know, Thursday morning onwards. The, you know, the pubs were full. Everything was full. And they all now, – so now this year it's been really easy to get back to the town and sort of say, right, we're going to do it again. Well, we've got people actually contacting us and say, right, when are, we, when are you just coming out and what can we do to help? So – yeah, it's been really good. And look, yeah, small country towns, they're great. They love a they love an event. They want, you know, people turning up in their area to do things. So that's sort of yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. And I think it's just one of those things that it just continues to grow the sport, gets more people involved, and it's simply brilliant. And it's great that, you know, again, like you said, a town like Hilson can, you know, get that sort of level because it is a championship like race. And, you know. It's going to be so good. Round two, uh, July, you know, like it's it's a great time of year to be racing. Nice and cool, not too hot. Yeah, yeah. like the campfire at the showgrounds and a few beverages and talk about racing. What could be better? I don't think there's anything better. What do you reckon, uh, Jeff? It's pretty much the prime, isn't it? It is. It is. And I tell you what, it, it, last year it got very, very chilly out there on the, the Saturday and Sunday morning. But, um, you know, a couple of fires around – on the Friday night, kept us all nice and warm and a, a couple of quiet babies. It was very nice. Yeah, yeah excellent. Could have snow across the, uh, the grass on Saturday and Sunday morning. It was a bit worrying there with the fog at times. Yes, it was. A <laughs> little bit of ice on the swag every now and then doesn't hurt anyone? Nah, not at all. Oh, you're better than me. We're from Queensland, central Queensland even, so we don't even know what snow looks like, let alone think about it. So, But no, excellent. 
I'm not, I'm pretty sure I'm not missing out, but that's okay. <laughs> Sandy tells me I'm missing out as well, so we'll see how it goes. But anyway, Dean, it is absolutely fantastic to have you, mate. It, you know, we're looking forward to Hilson, looking forward to the live feed there and the big screen and everything else going on. So excited about that. Uh, guys, thank you very much. And, uh, you know, it's going to be a good race. So a uh, big shout out to the club there at uh, Griffin and everything that's going on there. No worries. Thank you very much. And, yeah, big thanks to our landowners for letting us it all happen. So, yeah, John and Cherie and, and the Irvine family, yeah, but without them, this isn't happening. So, yeah, we've got to thank them. Yeah, absolutely. Big shout out to those guys. Again, the landowners are absolutely key to off-road racing. Could not do it without them. So, uh, you know, we're down to round, uh, we've gone our round two, we're up to round three now, and it is in beautiful Queensland. I get a bit excited about Queensland. Uh, we're at the Gundawindi 500. Now, I struggle with that because Jamie uh, Knight is here, the, the the president, the man, the myth, the legend. Hey, guys, how are you going? Yeah, good. Very, very good. Hey, mate, we're just shouting out and telling these boys how good Queensland is. Oh, mate, we're, we're pumped. We're just so excited for this year. The vibe in the club is just, yeah, unbelievable. Um, you're right. Rolling Gundy 500 off the tongue is a challenge. Um, we we still get around everywhere calling the Gundy 400, but we'll get used to it. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, whilst it's hard to say, it's excellent for the spectators and racers. If you 400 Ks is good, 500 Ks is better, right? Yeah, well, I guess so. I mean, Gundy's always tough. Um a lot of people struggle to do 400, I guess, and it was, yeah, it was a big decision to, to add the other lap. Um, it was more just, you know, our Saturday, we we come in and, yeah, we, we go, oh, geez, it would have been nice to do another lap on Saturday, and we've been talking about it for many years and the location change. Who, and who Jamie? Lap. Who, Jamie? Who says that exactly? <laughs> I think it was me. Yeah, gotcha. <laughs> These truck boys, I hear you. Hey, listen, uh, so, you yeah. know... It was easy to plug it in, you know, another lap. You know, we were doing a little bit over 400K, so another 80K lap, you know, brought us need on 500. So, yeah, let's let's give it a crack and, and yeah, make it a challenge. Yeah, brilliant, because you guys have really stepped over. It's, it's stepped up, sorry, stepped over. Stepped up because it's been a bit of a couple of challenging years, hasn't it really? You've had some landowner changes and bits and pieces, and, again, through the support of the club and the locals there at Gundy, you guys have uh, adjusted, pivoted, changed. You know, you've got new areas there, and, I mean, it's one of those things that you've just got to work with what you've got, haven't you? And, it, and it's just going bigger and stronger and better, Jamie. Yeah, we've had some challenges. We had... We had uh, we run in the COVID year, which most other clubs didn't. We pushed on, and we had bloody, we had great great race. And then we had a wet year, so we missed out. And then we had to move locations, which is always a challenge. But the lo the new location, if you haven't been there, it's 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 exceptional. Everyone that come there last year, and last year was wet um, when we and we pulled the race off. But the the facilities that we have now, and the pit area, and and the spectator viewing, we've built a massive mound for the spectators and, you know, just the work the club's put in to make it, you know, the facilities are just getting better and they're getting better at all events, not only us. Everyone's, everyone's you know, picked up the game and there's other events out there to do it better than us. So, yeah, we, we, we look when we get around and we go, what can we improve and how can we make it better for the competitor and the spectator? So, yeah, I, I was really impressed with the feedback we got from last year. Um, and there's still improvements happening. Yeah, excellent, mate. Hey, someone that does like a little bit of Gundy action is Dan Brown. Dan, talk us through some of the, your Gundy highlights and why you're looking forward to Gundy this year so much because I, I I know you're looking forward to it. Yeah, Gundy's, um, Gundy's definitely my favourite race. Um, we, had a, we had a river run going up to, up to COVID. I think we'd won three in four years. We almost got three in a row but didn't. Uh, I think we came second that year. So, yeah, in four years, we've got three wins in a second. So, I mean, that track's been good to me. It's uh, it's always good to get up to Queensland. The weather's good. Um, <clears throat> the track's, uh, it's killer. Everyone reckons it's rough. I reckon it's, you know, it's how you drive it. You know, if you, if you come from a motorbike background, it's it's not too bad to drive. If you try and hold a pin over everything, you're just going to just about um, nail yourself. So, no, I, I love it. The, the town gets behind it. It's good fun. Um, it's, you know, all my mates that like to come away to races, they always just, they want to come to Gundy. Uh, it's it's just something about it. It's, yeah, it's it's killer. And um, yeah, that new pit area they've done up there. You know, they can probably probably almost facilitate two hundred cars and in, in in their pits. So 
we don't want that many up there because there's going to be going to be some lapping going on. But um, yeah, it's it's just one of those races, and the Queensland series is so strong that it gets such a good following. And yeah, another one of those races where you, you never know who's going to win. Yeah, and I think what's cool about it is again, and I said it at the start, is the ARB Championship has such a range of races. You know, again, we're talking about a totally different race, a totally different terrain again. And and I think that's one of the keys there, isn't it? Like, you know, it's going to take a lot of driver skill, a lot of uh, variance in your skill set. You know, you can't just be a hold it flat kind of guy. It's gonna it's gonna prove the real uh, the real drivers, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. I mean, everyone always talks about it being a drivers track. You know, like you, you go to a track and say, oh, it's a real drivers track. But the four rounds we have are real drivers tracks. You do have to use your head. You have to button off. You can't. You know, Rainbow is it's crazy fast. We did a well, we, we had a flat tire at 235k an hour last year. And, um, yeah, and then you go from those really fast straights into the, the, the roughest stuff you've seen. Like, it, it's it's way rougher than think. Uh, just in terms that it's 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 square edge, it's inconsistent. So, you know, that's where Greg's going to be quick there. Then you you go to somewhere like Hilston where it's, it's real tight and twisty. And I say tight and twisty. When we did reconnaissance there, I was laughing because I was just thinking there's no way Toby Price is going to win this race. He's going to be like fifth or sixth at best. And he, yeah, he showed us. But, um, you know, so that's another driver's track. You know, you got to use your head to get around and, and stay out the front. Going to Windy again, it's so rough. Um, you know, you got to use your head. You can't hold a pin. Um, then we come back to Pines where, you know, it's again, it's it's an engine breaker, that one, because it's just so hard going on the cars. So you got to you got to button off that little bit just to get the thing home. you got to have that mechanical sympathy at, at every race we go to. Yeah, that's exactly right. So many changes there because, uh, as you you know, I was just picturing the races as you were talking there. And, you know, like even uh, Gundy, you know, you got to got to time those things and jump it, you know, doubles, triples, all that sort of thing. And then, you know, even um, the Pines, the change in light there is crazy. So, yeah, every single track there is different. It's a change. You know, the championship is going to be won by the, you know, the smart driver. I mean, you've got to be fast. That's part of it. But what do they always say? That the the fastest slow guy wins or something along those lines. And, and yeah, it's going to be an interesting uh, championship this year, I see. And Gundy, I mean, it's going to be so crazy to be able to see on the big screen at the spectators area out in, you know, those runs out the back, the bear country and bits and pieces like that. Um, you know, again, that's just stuff that as a spectator, oh, I just eat it up. I love it so much. Yeah, we we can't wait. It'll be, I mean, nobody gets to see anything else that happens out there. And I'll tell you what, what the spectator sees is pretty, pretty spectacular. But what we get to see on that 80 kilometres of track is something else. It's, yeah, it's, everybody says there's nothing else like it. Them melon holes, they're just something something else. So, um, and they, they're they still there and they haven't changed. So let's let's show everyone what it's all about. <laughs> I love it, Jamie. It's funny because you say that, um, and I, I totally agree because we've been lucky enough to be on either end of it. You know, I've driven, navigated, and commentated at that event. And, you know, you hear the oohs and ahs in front of the, uh, you know, coming down some of those the areas in front of the spectator area. And realistically, Dan will be able to attest to this, is – you know, 90% of the stuff, that, that's the easy stuff that you guys, you know, it is pretty wild and it can go wrong as we've seen in the in the past. But realistically, you've had 100 moments out the back that are worse than any of that, isn't it? Yeah, oh, definitely. Sure. The, the amount of times I put my thing on the roof and you think, God, I wish someone was there to see that or get a video of that. And Yeah, George, and I, that's why I, I could I never understand people in a single seater. Like the amount of times George and I just laugh at each other and just say, how did we get away with that? And then you get back and you just talk about it. So it's, it's always a good time. And yeah, Jamie, Jamie and you guys will know about that. You know, it's, a, it's always uh, it's always entertaining what you do out there where, where there's not a soul to see it. Yeah, that is Yeah, sure. absolutely. Now, I think one of the things there that's pretty cool is that Jamie is indeed a racer as well as, uh, you know, the, the major, well, you're the president of the club, aren't you? Yeah, mate. Yeah, been president now for a few years. Took over from Joey Boomer. Um, he's a legend in himself and he's been around longer than pretty much anyone in off-road racing that I know. And he's back on the scene too. Um, he's got a, got a racer coming in, big seven leader. Yeah, so that's going to be Ooh. interesting to see Joey B back in the driver's seat. Absolutely. He might have to fix up his fitness. <laughs> <laughs> that's a bit but, rough. Yeah, Listen, Joey, but, uh, Joey's but, been like that for a long time. He's been fast, <laughs> man. He's got some uh, fast runs there. And he's someone that's a bit close to us because, gee, we liked uh, that Jimco that he had for a lot of years. 
I remember at Griffith, he, he came back in and he'd, he'd given up. There was two, two laps to go. And he just said to me, he said, I can't do this. He said, I just run out of breath. So he'd stopped. He was doing quite well, poor old Joey. No, he's been working out. He's fit as a fiddle. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> race fit, just like his race car. Yeah, believe me, you don't have to be fit to drive a buggy, that's for sure. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So good. Uh, absolutely. Well, it'd be great to see again some of those cars back. And, uh, you know, again, there, there is some cool cars coming in and racing this championship. Very exciting to see. I mean, there's a, there's a number of new vehicles, there's a number of returning races, new races. Like uh, one of the things about social media, you do get to see so much now, don't you? Like, you know, I think there was one floating through Queensland the other day and I didn't even know they had a race car, let alone, you know, now they've got a, a quite a nice truck. So there's a lot of things getting around that is going to be quite exciting. Jamie, I mean, you've got the new truck yourself and, you know, I, I know it's not brand new for you, but you know about the last year and you've been racing it pretty consistently. I mean, it's going to be exciting to get to have a big run at Gundy in, uh, in oh. that car for yourself. Yeah, sure. We, I mean, we got that truck off Blue Hall, and it's an amazing machine. And yeah, you know, we got to, our first experience was a wet Gundy, which is not your best experience, I reckon. But um, you know, we had a couple of teething issues the first couple of races, but yeah, you know, we we went over to the race over at Inglewood, and we got a second outright over there, and and had a good run. And you know, I've been working on trucks since getting ready for that um, ARB Championship, and you know, we're keen, locked in, can't wait to get going. You know, we're heading down to Rainbow next week, so you know, a big year ahead for us, and. Just on the back of that, the Gundy Club um, and the cars in Gundy is, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's just going great. We, we're we going to have eight race cars just in Gundy alone. So, yeah, I mean, that, that pumps the club and, and, and just gives a great vibe in the town about around off-road racing and everyone's just behind it and we just we just can't wait to get it happening. And, yeah, just, yeah. I, I just, and like you said, the cars that are getting about, um, there's new cars everywhere. Everyone's, there's cars coming in, there's cars moving around, there's, yeah, the, the vibe in off-road racing at the moment is just crazy. And, and and not just like we do talk about, it, it's hard not to, but talk about the big cars. But Jamie, like, you know, also, you know, class 10s, class 1s, you know, all, the, all through the classes too. And I think that's a key because, you know, Sometimes it's very easy to get caught up in, okay, we love trophy trucks, trophy trucks look great in it. But, you know, there's also a number of other races. There's no, And to see it from their perspective and then be involved in the club, you know, it, it's great to see that as well. You know, you guys, you're talking about eight races. And, you know, again, it's through all the classes, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, we got, yeah, we pretty much got every class in town just about. But, no, it's good. And, yeah, everyone, it's a community and we love it. And, yeah, it, it's just great to see, yeah. You know, People get involved, and and if you've got interest in it, and you and you've got racing, you're keen to help out too. And you know that that new facility that we've we've erected out there is, you know, is is thanks to everybody in the club. Um, they've done a massive job to get that to where it is, and and we're improving it. I'm not going to lie to you. There's been some um, earth moving machines out there lately, so yeah, some uh, pretty cool stuff to see next time everybody shows up. So, uh -huh. yeah, oh. A hint, little please. sneak peek. I like that. I like that a lot. Well, uh, August 11th to 13th, we all get to check it out together and it will be on the live feed. But I tell you what, again, I know we've talked a lot about this live feed. Do not sit at home though. If you get the opportunity to go to one of these races live, you'd be mad to sit at home because there is nothing like that race fuel in the nostrils, seeing these cars. Cause I tell you what, you see them on uh, TV or on the videos and when you see them in real life, they are big bits of kit. They go very, very fast. It's hard to see it through the lens. So I, I can say if you're anywhere around that area on August 11th to 13th, you would be mad not to get to Gundy or any of the other championship races. Again, four races this year in the championship. And it's going to be exciting. Jamie, thank you so much for uh, being on here on the Dirtbags podcast. Uh, anything else that you'd like to wrap up with and any uh, landowners that you'd like to throw out to? Oh, all the landowners, and I know a lot of people have heard over the years, we, we race through 14 properties, so I'd like to thank each and every one of them personally um, and from the club. Also, big shout out to ARB, Mickey Thompson, Raceline. Mate, you, you blokes are legends, and, and you just let us, let us do what we need to do. So, yeah, can't wait to bring it on. Um, little sneaky one, Gundy, we're throwing a little 250 in, state round for the year too, so just a little plug there. Um, but, yeah, yeah. Um, can't wait to get down to Rainbow. Can't wait to get to all the rounds, actually. And uh, let's bring on a big year. Hey, Jamie, will that, that 250 be, uh, that's going to be the prologue track or what? Um, if, if it is, oh. I'm, I'm coming. No, mate, we're going to, it's just around the bear run, mate. 
Yeah, no, you can keep that. I'll stay home. It, it, it's, <laughs> a, it's only for locals, Dan. You're not allowed, mate. Yeah, I'll get some. I'll get some practice in anywhere I can. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, no, awesome. Hey, mate, I love the shirt too. My my shirt. I thought yeah. I'd bring the party today. I, you know, I just felt like it was like that kind of evening. You know, first uh, podcast of 2023. Why not? It's the uh, cool. ARB Championship announcement live feeds. It's all happening here tonight, mate. Yeah, now I feel a little underdressed, but anyway, hey, another little uh, bit, bit of a shout out too. You know, we've we've done a lot of things through the year. New website, Gundy 500 Facebook page. Um, so just yeah, check it out online online memberships. You know, there's there's been a lot happening with us, um, and yeah, there's going to be a lot more. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, excellent. And listen, when we uh, finish up here and dump this on YouTube, we'll throw all the uh, links down below to all the Facebook clubs and, and the ARB Championship and whatnot. And because, uh, yeah, definitely, guys, get behind these guys. Again, it is family run, good mates, good times. And even if you're not a racer, like you don't have a car yourself, if you've ever been involved with off-road racing, it's a great opportunity. You know, these guys are always looking for volunteers, always looking for club members. So, you know, there's always an opportunity. They don't hold out, do they, Jamie? You know, everyone's welcome, so. Everyone's always welcome. I've seen the people in the Gundy Club, so, uh, mate, you know, everyone's allowed. I'm just kidding, Jamie, just kidding. Yeah, no, all good. <laughs> awesome, mate. Thank you so much. And, again, that's our round three in August. It is the Gundy 500, and I tell you, that's going to be exciting. Hey, boys, we are on to round four of the ARB Australian Championship, and I'm excited to get – on Daniel Lamb. It's going to be a good one. How are you guys? Hey, good. Listen, I really am starting to feel like there is a lot of Dan's on this podcast. We might need to start calling. Yeah. Oh, no, I don't know where I'm going with that. So how are you, Daniel? You having a win? Yeah. No, we're, we're going all right. Um, obviously, we've got a bit of time till our event, but um, pretty, pretty excited about the season and um, what's going to um, – yeah, I think it'd be a big year for the ARB Australian Off-Road Racing Championship. Um, geez, a rainbow field stack. Like, um, it's just quality the whole way through, all the classes. So I think it's going to be a cracking race. It's going to be great. Mm. Yeah, I totally agree. It's going to be one of those things because the first round always sets – you know, towards the end of this championship as well, doesn't it? Like, you know, like you get that first round off the uh, off the bat and then all of a sudden, you know, you either have a great run for the season or, or not so great run for the season, you know, but it, it's going to be one of those things where these consistent drivers, you know, you're going to have to really think about the racetracks. Every racetrack's different. I mean, Millicent's going to be no different. Yeah, well, the thing with Millicent, we... Apart from the roads leading to and from the pine forest, uh, pretty much different track every year. So we have to work around logging operations and things like that. So it's very rare that we have two tracks the same. They're similar. We might use similar bits, but we have to work uh, within 141 plantations and Forestry SA and um, we submit a map. They go out and have a look. They'll give us their logging plan and we work around it. And between us all, we um, come up with a track. So some years you get a cracker. Some years you might get a you know a bad spot here or there. But in general, there's no real home track advantage. So it's a very even – it's a good evener out of um, competitors, I would think. Yeah. Yeah, I know last year <clears throat> there was a couple of areas there that, um, you know, it just come down through the fresh, uh, freshly, fresh deforestation, so to speak, the fresh harvest. Yeah. Yep. And a couple of guys um, miscued and found a few tree stumps, but that's all part of the fun down there, isn't it? That's that's yeah. the beauty about having a reverse reverse start. So it wasn't wasn't the people at the front. So, yeah, that was, <laughs> that, was uh, that was that was a good one. But yeah, that that track last year was uh, that was the best Millicent track I've ever raced on, and the, the weather was magic. There was um, if you if you weren't there last year, you definitely missed out. So don't don't miss out again. Yeah, correct. 
Yeah, and it's interesting too because I, I think a lot of people that have never been to Millicent sort of think, oh, you know, it's a it's a smooth, fast track, but that's not true at all. It gets very, very rough, very, very worked up. It gets big burned corners. You know, it's it's interesting, isn't it? Like that it, it changes because it's one of those tracks that does. I know all off road race tracks change quite a bit. You know, throughout throughout the laps, but you know, and you can you can attest to it. It's really one of those ones that you got to use your head and really think hey, when you go fast and you know when you play the game if that makes sense yeah definitely we um uh, and the, the unique thing about pines as well um you know probably stealing daniel stunder here a bit but you know they have they have the prologue on the saturday they have the the shootout um a top 10 oh sorry a shootout like the heats run as well so there's lots to see on the saturday then on the sunday we go out into the forest and it's actually a reverse grid so the fastest car starts last because there's even if it's um super dry there's no dust there really um so you know we can we can overtake um, and and catch up. So it's it's a it's a unique way to race. Um, last year we started off with Tyler Owen um, and sat behind him for a lap and just you know watched and he had a cracking pace going. So you know we just sort of ducked in behind him when he'd, he'd go out past cars and um, it's those first two laps at, at Pines. Uh, it's it's a really unique way to go racing, starting reverse grid in off road. Yeah, absolutely. Very, very cool. And it's a great way to do it. I mean, it is obviously comes with its own set of challenges, but it, it comes with its own set of excitement as well. Now, uh, Daniel, like talk to us about some of the things that you're looking forward to the most in 2023 points and what we can expect. Um, I think we uh, we had a cracking event. Um, <laughs> it's really great to hear that everyone – um, appreciated our efforts with what we put on with live stream and big screen at the event. Um, just like we, we get a lot of spectators at our event. That's probably a, um, it would be, have to be up there, one of the best attended off road events, just sheerly, uh, purely for the a viewing area. We get uh, prologue track, heat racing, um, your starts, your finishes. Um, during our breaks on on Sunday, um, the traffic coming in and out was actually like the restarts were crazy. We had cars leaving, we had them three wide on the start line. Like it was just, um, it was it was really good having rally safe because um, the rally safe countdown clock in the cars let the competitors know um, the countdown to when their start was. So basically, they could get themselves to start line. We just have to line them up in their three rows and um, under starters orders, but it was um, normally, normally our Saturday is our most impressive day, but Sunday really, um, really went well for us this year. So um, great field of cars. We had a lot of good locals, a few local guys stepping it up this year. A couple of them can't get, pardon me, a couple of them can't get to rainbow, but um, the rest of the season they've sort of, going to have a crack at and um yeah i just think that the championship in general will uh i think we'll really kick some goals this year so hopefully um along with the guys doing every round of the championship you're going to have competitors that come in and do one event or two events so the regular guys chasing points still have to deal with those guys that might just uh come and go a bit so i think um, I think it'll be a very interesting year and I think it'll be a great year for the sport and our ARB championship in general. Yeah, absolutely. That's some interesting points you make there and very true about the people coming and going in and out of the, you know, there's there's some locals that are very fast and, you know, that, that might upset the position of the uh, championship competitors, if that makes sense. But, you know, like you also mentioned about the spectators. I mean, that's one of the things that Millicent's always been known for. You know, the, the top 10 shootout, uh, the dash for cash. Daniel, is that happening this year? We haven't haven't run dash for a few years. We um, decided to uh, go short course racing. So we did prologue and then that, your prologue result put you into your heats and we say around 10 to 12 car heats of four laps of the prologue course. And what it did was it, um, we've got punters on the hill. People are paying to come watch. Everyone wants sponsors. Everyone wants to see action. The dash for cash was fine if you wanted the cash, but you got guys chasing championships. You got people with 
very expensive cars, very expensive running costs. And we just found that, you know, as an official or event organiser, you're rolling through the pits, asking who wants to go out and race for money. And it sort of gets a bit old. So putting a um, putting the field out there and putting a time clock on them uh, definitely uh, gets us a show. And, um, you know, we have a great VIP area. We have a lot of um, businesses, a lot of people pay to have a special area sit in and watch all this. And um, it's some of the best wheel to wheel racing you'll ever see within the sport. Um, so yeah, that's, that's our format and we'll probably stick with that for time being, but not saying we won't change it up, but that's, um, that's been working and it seems to be, um, yeah, it seems to be pretty popular with everyone. No, absolutely. And that makes a ton of sense. There's no question about that. You're absolutely right. Uh, you know, when you've got uh, championship points in mind, it does make sense that, you know, you're thinking about the long game, not necessarily the short game. And, and I get that. But I mean, that's one of the things, again, you've still obviously nailed it because again, the pines, it's got that that course that you can essentially see from the hill. And uh, again, you can't stress it enough. I know Josh has been there personally and, and, you know, just raves about that racetrack and and how you really can see that part of the race course and that's one thing that a lot of a lot of clubs definitely you know we just don't have the land available to do it and uh you're very blessed there and millicent's such a great spot i mean in the pine trees beautiful area and uh one of those things that again even if you can see it on the live stream for the championship which is a big thing you also should go there live, shouldn't you? you? Make the trip, go and have a look, see the race cars. It's just one of those fantastic spots. Yeah, hundred um, percent. Our our main start finish pit area. Um, it's on the sixty k sign on town. It's Bitchman Road to the front gate. Um, we are very grateful for the um, Teagle family and the Teagle Excavations business for their support. They. They own that land. It is a working quarry. Uh, anyone that was there this year would have noticed that half the pits were sunken down quite a few metres, but, hey, they got to raise rubble and crush it, so that's what they got to do. Um, we we close roads. We close main roads. We have a lot of helpers sit on these, you know, road closures all day on the Sunday. Um, the Water Ranch Council are a great supporter of ours. They help us achieve all that. Um, 141 plantations, um, they allow us to race through their forest as well as Forestry SA uh, assist us. Um, yeah, we have our main event sponsors in Teagle Excavations, ARB, 4x4 Accessories and Hards Transport. Um, plus, yeah, we're very grateful for the championship sponsors in ARB again, Mickey Thompson Tyres and Raceline Wheels. Um also on that, Aora have been great. Um, I'm not sure if everyone knows, Aora have chipped in. They've been subsidising Rally Safe for a couple of years, which helps us events because it's, the cheaper we can have an entry fee, it helps the competitors come and do our events. And they're also contributing to the promotion side of things. So Aora is giving money each round to, um, to help put that live stream on, which... Um, yeah, that's fantastic. Um, and the other thing that happens in this championship that hasn't been mentioned tonight is the Martin Motorsports uh, for the last uh, season have been um, giving a cash prize to, um, they call it the Good Sportsmanship Award. And um, I believe they're continuing that this year. So I'd like to yeah, put a big, um, big thanks out to Martin Motorsport for um, putting something back and, yeah, Craig's um, and the family have been great for supplying that. So yeah, that's um, it's it's a really good thing and goes a long way with those who receive it. Yeah, absolutely. We continually talk about how how amazing the family of off road racing is, and and you know the Martins are a family like that, and just everyone in the community that gets in and gets behind and puts their money where their mouth is, their races, their competitors, their sponsors. It's almost like a lineup that it just it just flows each and every way, doesn't it? Their club officials, their event, you know, their volunteers. It really is such a big thing that clubs need people to get behind and race and and sponsor and be involved in the event. And again, we have some fantastic sponsors on board and, and involvement. And, and that's one of those things that you just can't do without, isn't it, Daniel? Oh, exactly. Our 
we have a pretty diverse range of people in our club. Um, we're pretty blessed with an area that our club members can go and use all year round. Um, so not everyone's going to have a, you know, crack and big buggy or a trophy truck. So, and, and quite often you'll find that the, the dudes out there on the working bees and pegging the track out and all that, uh, they're not millionaires of the sport. So we've got to look after those guys. Um, and we always try and uh, encourage them to come be a part of the event, whether it be helping or competing. I mean, it's it's such a big thing to put on. Um, yeah, we need every hand we can get. And we draw in a lot of other clubs and people and service clubs and um, our committee. Our committee's such hard working. Um, I, I don't know that anyone else in the sport realises how many meetings and how many phone calls and organising and hire companies and this and that. It's just crazy. So, um, yeah, I'd like to thank our committee, all our club members and all those other guys, you know, recovery guys. Um, we have road closure guys, uh, line-up guys, start guys. You know, the list goes on. It's huge. So um, next time you're at an event, you know, shake a hand of the guy who's lining you up for prologue or something like that because uh, they're there of their own free will and and helping us put a show on and helping us go racing. So, yeah. Yeah, and it cannot happen without them. Absolutely true. And, uh, yeah, anyone wearing that high-vis deserves a pat in, on the back, in my opinion, that's for sure. So it's awesome. Hey, Daniel, thank you so much for coming on and telling us about the Millicent race. I know you've still got probably some changes and things growing and things in the works, so I'm excited to see how that goes. And, again, it's going to be so exciting to not only be able to spectate it live at track but also live on this live feed that the ARB Championship are working with. Yeah, definitely. Um, it was a big task to put the live feed together and to be, um, you know, approached and get the crew we had to – to take that on the road, um, it's it's a massive job. And, um, yeah, I think they'll be trying their best to uh, keep that quality up and, and improve. So um, I think it's a great direction for the sport. I think this year will be a very defining year for the championship. Um, providing this all goes well, I think it'll be great foundations to move forward and, you know, bigger and better things. And we've got a product to sell then. So like any business, um, the, the championship is a business and if, uh, yeah, if we get more money and you can do better things. So it's uh, it's just a big circle really. So, yeah, I think it would be great. I think it should um, keep everyone at home informed, all the family members. We've got overseas interest. Uh, I think Nick Marzen's uh, been whispering in fish logistics here. Uh, so he's already said he's going to be tuning in and doing what he can. So it would be yeah, quite exciting to see how how far and wide this will go. Yeah, absolutely agree. That's going to be one of those things that just continues to grow, I believe. And and Millicent, I mean, it's been so good for so long and it's just going to be a, a fantastic event. I mean, Jeff, uh, from Mickey Thompson's, I mean, I know that you guys have been involved and been tied up, you know, going to Millicent and bits and pieces for many years. So uh, anything to add about the Millicent race round four? Look, I reckon that Millicent race is <clears throat> one of my favourites. Um, great town, great people. I, I can't say great weather because I've frozen my butt off and got wet down there and hit by hail and all sorts of things. Um, but look, the way they lay out, the way they run the run the event is just brilliant. You know, all the clubs do a fantastic job, but you know, the guys at the Pines really step up and they make it make it a really really good event. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, Daniel, big shout out, mate. Thank you so much for coming on. Uh, sorry. Um, yeah, thanks so much for coming on the podcast. We appreciate it immensely. Sorry, I don't know what Josh is doing there. But anyway, you talk. Okay. Thank you so much for coming on. And we appreciate the round four. And uh, it's going to be a big one at Millicent in September. I mean, it, it is going to be the, the round four. It's going to be the finish of the championship. And we're going to crown some kings there. And that's always a great time. Sorry, we might have lost him there at the moment. But anyway, big shout out there. Thanks very much. I was going to say, that's probably what Josh was telling me, to be honest with you. So big thanks for that. But anyway, uh, yeah, again, it's going to be one of those races. Dan, you've done very well, like D DB. 
you've done very well at Millicent over the years. And I know it's one that you're a favorite of. I know it's been one that we've been to and we've enjoyed immensely. And again, as round four, that's going to be one that, uh, you know, really does finish up a championship nicely. Yeah, it's a, it's a great race to go to. We always have a ball there. You know, um, my wife and kids, all the family come along. Um, they, they have a good time. But another thing they do there, you know, they had the, one of the big Teagle sand trucks. It's, you know, it's a small thing, but, you know, they had this huge sand truck with a ladder going into the back of it with half full of sand with all the Tonka trucks. So, you know, all the kids are in there playing, um, having a ball. It's, it's really family friendly and you can, you can, you can have a great day there with the family. Um, I think this year, um, again, it's going to be great for the championship. Um, Wellesley touched on it before, but, you know, we drag, I think it was over $25,000 worth of prizes um, to give away at the end of the year um, to all the competitors. So, you know, everyone comes away and get, and get something, you know, they get their trophy and they, you know, they get some some tyres, they get some ARB gear. Um, you know, this year there's, there's going to be some wheels up for grabs. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're really excited about it. So, um, yeah, if you're... If you, if you've got a car in the shed or you're, you're thinking about coming to a race, um, don't think too hard because it comes around too fast. So get the uh, get the spanners out and get the thing back on the on the track as soon as possible. Yeah, I love that. Absolutely agree. Listen, I think that this is one of the things, this championship, we've talked a couple of times here, boys, that, you know, it's going to be one of those things that it's, it's fought over all four rounds. I think that's going to be the key, isn't it? Like, you know, I mean, the points are structured in that way that the championship is won over the four. I mean, there's going to be some great competitors. We've talked about looking along the list. You know, there's obviously some great teams, some great races, some great sponsors involved. It's going to be great with the live feed. I've got to be honest, boys, I'm just excited for this. I feel like 2023, I mean, it's always been a breakout year, but you guys have just been going from strength to strength with the ARB Championship, and surely you're excited about this year. Yeah, oh, this year, wow. You know, I, I can't wait for this year. I reckon it's it's going to be a cracker of a year. Um, really, you know, if people want to come out and have a go at it, it's probably the premier championship of everything in Australia. Um not overly expensive. You can come out and have some fun, win some prizes. We're very easy to get on with. You know, come out and enjoy it. Now, Dan, yeah, also think... from... Oh. So you go. No, no, you go. I was just going to oh. say, because I wanted to get your perspective as both a racer and an event, uh, you know, you're, you're at least involved. Let's be honest. You're a sponsor. You're, you're heavily involved with all that goes on behind the scenes. It's cool to see both perspectives. Yeah, I mean, we're just we're just plugging away and do what we do. Um, we know what the competitors want. Um, we know what the clubs need. Um, we're trying to keep costs down. We know that you know, it's not just the guys at the top end of town. That you know, it's 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 everyone else. You know that everyone, you know, the, the clubs around the countries. You know, that's why you have such big um, competitors from places like Griffith, Gundawindi, Millicent. It's because you know the, the towns get behind the race. They come along as a spectator and they see it. And they go, oh, I'd love to get involved in this. So. You know, you got those entry level classes and, and the field the fields at all our races are really stacked. You know, there's really good competition, whether it be class two, class ten, class seven, um, class five, unlimited trophy truck, whatever you you sort of you, you whatever you're racing and you know, you come back and everyone has a story about you know, there was just such close racing all day, you know, the, the three top class ten guys at Millicent, you know, were all within thirty seconds of each other for the, pretty much the whole day. Um, so, you know, it's, there's, it's a really stacked field um, that every, every race we go to. So don't feel like you have to come and do a championship. Pick one or two races. Come check it out. Um, you know, we generally have camping at every race. Um, there's, there's good food and beverage at every race. Um, we try and keep the cost down as much as possible where we can. Um, and we want everyone to have a good time. We want families to have fun. We, you know, we want, we want the kids to come along to the race and, and hang off the fence because that's what I did when I was little. You know, I, I remember going to Kempsey and just – hanging off the fence and, and watching watching all the racing and that sort of got me hooked. So um, you know if you're, oh, totally if you're a, agree. Yeah, if you're if you're a sponsor too, there's there's plenty of opportunities to get involved with um with local level racing. Um, you know, help out with the clubs. Um, you can, you know, sponsor classes um, with the live feed now, you know, you can sponsor a camera. So, you know, you might be the the Mike's shock shop um live camera that's out at big bear uh, at bear run at, at gundawindi you know you know that that'll cut to your logo when it's out there so you know there's good opportunity now for sponsors to get involved and doesn't necessarily have to be stemming from the off-road community it's it's going to be touching a lot of homes so mm. yeah if you if you can um get involved 
Well, I love that, Dan. Talk to us, or, or Jeff, if the, you're the best person involved. How do they get in contact with you to get involved in that? Because I did want to bring that up. You're talking about live streaming, like, you know, having a camera sponsored, because that was something that was talked about. So, you know, like if they want a camera, how do they get involved? How do they get in contact with the ARB Championship? Well, probably um, the first instance would be get onto the AORA website, so AORRA, and go into the contact and contact the publicity officer. And there's an email address there, and uh, they will then, you know, go from there, trying to um, get things organised for you. And yeah, all the clubs have Facebook pages as well. Yeah. So, you know, if it's a club local to you, get involved. You know, Jeff, myself, whoever. You know, we're all we're all reachable. We all um, we all talk to each other all the time. So, you know, we're never going to knock back a sponsor or someone that wants to help out. So we'll we'll point them in the oh, right yeah. direction. So <laughs> there's always 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 way to get in, involved and and help out. Yeah, that's good. And because I was going to say that goes for sponsors, volunteers. If you want to join a club and get involved on that level, you're dead right. You know, Facebook is one of those things now that you can get involved and get in contact with any of the guys that we've had on board today. So it's it's a great point that there is. And again, we'll we'll drop some links down in the bottom of the uh, comments uh, in the in the uh, list here and make sure that we can spread that word as well because we love volunteers, we love sponsors, we love all of those people involved in making off road racing better. Yeah, it's, it's what it's about. You know, get get everyone involved and. Um, you know, we, we're sort of seeing it now. There, there was a there was a period there for probably oh, it was probably seven or eight years ago where where car numbers were dwindling, clubs were getting smaller. You know, the age of um, club members was was quite high, and now you go to the clubs, it's rejuvenated. Um, people are excited again. There's more cars in town. It's a younger you know sort of group of people coming through to help help the events. Um, so yeah, it's, it's super exciting um, from you know as as being a sponsor. Um, part of the committee um and a, and a racer as well it's um you know we we as i said at the start we do this for fun if it wasn't fun we wouldn't do it and mm. you know this is this is what it's all about yeah and some of these youngins are painfully fast too dan it's a bit of a killer honestly but anyway it is what it is yeah, no, i'm sort of every time i look at, at entry list now i'm thinking sure, i'm getting i'm getting a bit old but then <laughs> I just remember Glenn. I just remember Glenn Owen, or you know, even my dad. You know, he still won a prologue at, at Pines. So you know, every time Glenn Owen rolls up to a race, he's he's fast, and you know, he, he ain't no athlete. That's for sure. Yeah, absolutely <laughs> awesome racer, awesome race car driver. So yeah, you're dead right, Dan. That gives uh, gives us some hope, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. So you know, as long as we've got those people in the sport, it makes us all feel quite good. Yeah, absolutely. Now, listen, ladies and gentlemen, we've had a great podcast so far. I think we're you happy, Jeff, if we wrap it up at that point because I feel like we've got to, uh, you know, a bit late in uh, your Victorians. You're down there. You're probably ready for bed, Dan. It yeah, would way be. past my bedtime. Yeah. <laughs> well, it is Friday night, it. but, um, yeah, the uh, the old me would, would have had to call in sick for, for doing this, but the, the new improved father of two is ready for bed. He's done. I like that. I love it. Yeah, I was going to say, um, you know, you've got some good antics back in the uh, the early days of racing. But mm. yes, yeah, as with age comes, uh, you know, a little bit of maturity. And now look at you, you're doing podcast night. Yeah, look, the, uh, it hasn't gone away. It's just dormant. It just, just waits for presentation evenings to come out. <laughs> I love it. There you go. So you're going to get a show at all four rounds, you reckon? Oh, definitely. Yeah, especially if we do well and it's it's even better perfect <laughs> hey now listen dan thank you so much for coming on board on uh the dirtbags podcast tonight it's been an absolute pleasure to have everyone on board uh jeff you as well now any final words boys that you'd like to uh wrap up with here oh look i just <clears throat> like to you know thank danny and arb for everything they've done for the sport over the years and uh look moving forward this year as Lamy said you know it's going to be one of those years that will determine what we do in the future. And I think it's just going to be absolutely amazing year. Looking forward to it. Yeah. And I'll back up what Jeff said, you know, thanks. Thanks a lot for the support from, from Mickey Thompson um, and, and Raceline. And um, as I was saying earlier, um, I, I filtered a bunch of phone calls after Millicent from the live feed where people were saying, geez, it looked magic. You know, that looked awesome. I missed out. And it's just one of those things, you know, you, you don't know when your number's up. So, if you can get out and get to a race, um, just do it. Uh, you know, not necessarily our championship, but 
you know, if you can make it to a race, get out there, get reinvigorated, help your clubs. Um, you know, the, the local races need the support just as much as everyone else. So get out there and uh, and, and get, get the wheels turning. Yeah, can't wait. Yeah, that's an excellent point. Absolutely, uh, Dan. Like the state champion, like state level racing, absolutely feeds championship level racing, and and it really does take everyone. It's it's a big family that goes off road racing. And guys, I'd like to thank you personally for being on Dirtbags Podcast. It was an absolute pleasure. Uh, big shout out to all of you guys. So ARB as a series sponsor or a championship sponsor, as well as Mickey Thompson and Raceline, again, the major sponsors this year. It's very exciting to have you guys on. And uh, Jeff, Dan, and also Chris, who obviously left the studio earlier. But, guys, it's been an absolute pleasure here tonight. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks a lot, and uh, hopefully get to do it again soon. No worries, boys. It'll be great, and we'll catch up uh, in person for a, for maybe a sneaky Bundy at some point. Oh, yes. You can keep that. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, here I'll, we go. I'll stick with my Victorian. Jack. Yeah. yeah, there's nothing hey, wrong with Vin Diesel. Yeah. <laughs> uh, awesome. All right, ladies and gentlemen, and that with that, we'll wrap it up. Thank you very much for uh, joining the first Dirtbags podcast for 2023. Many more to come, and we'll have many more great guests on board. Thank you, everyone, and have a great Friday night.